Assalamu alaikum dear students, I warmly welcome all of you to Allama Iqbal Open University Studios. Today the program focuses on present perfect continuous tense and I hope you will enjoy this segment as much as you did the previous one. This idea too has been taken from the course book that has already been provided to you by the university. I believe that all of you know the importance of learning English language today. As a matter of fact, it is the only language that can be called a true source of language for international communication. On the other hand, it is a fact too that there are millions of people in the world who cannot speak or even understand English, but English seems to be the only choice available for the international community for the sake of communication. And to learn English, one must learn the rules of its grammar. So to teach you present perfect continuous tense, today we have with us Mr. Arshad Mahmood who is an assistant professor and teacher grammar, language skills and pronunciation. Welcome Mr. Arshid, how are you doing today? Fine, thank you. What about you? Alhamdulillah, I am good. The topic that we have selected for our dear students to, for today is present perfect continuous tense. I want you to elaborate each and every bit of it. Right, sure I will, but uh, focus is going to be on two angles again. Right. Function and form. Right, right, right. So, so don't forget students, function and form both are necessary and we have to keep in mind that both of them are equally important. Uh, I hope I am going to teach the tense in the same way, the way we did in the past. My plan is to teach this tense from two different angles, the form and the function. Yeah. And I hope that the students will enjoy this tense as well. Inshallah, I hope so. So first of all, we'll focus on the form. Uh, and when we talk about form, we have to look at three different uh, forms. We have to look at affirmative mm -hmm. or positive, and interrogative or question form, and then negative. negative. So first, affirmative. The formula is subject comes first, and then they have or has, according to the person. For example, if I say he, then it should be has. If I say I, we, you, then it should be have. Mm -hmm. Plus verb in ing form, and then object, and definitely there is been as well uh, that definitely leads to ing form of verb so some examples are there if i say uh, seema has been cooking since morning mm -hmm. so if you look at the shape of this structure of this sentence has is there and then been been in fact is the third form of be mm -hmm. and why we use third form you know because of has mm -hmm. has demands third form right. and because of been uh, ing form is there so cook will change into cooking cook. So okay. the sentence is, Seema has been cooking since morning. Here if I drop since, the sentence is wrong. For example, I cannot say Seema has been cooking full stop. I mm -hmm. cannot say Seema has been doing this thing, the boys have been playing. I must mention the time. Second thing is that if I say uh, Seema is cooking since morning, this too is wrong. You know why? Mm -hmm. uh, because many Pakistani people, they translate from Urdu into English. English. In Urdu we can say, Wo se kaam kar raha hai. But mm -hmm. in English we must say, he has been working since morning not he's working since morning mm -hmm. some more examples you have been talking for one hour here since and for but first we use since Seema has been cooking since morning but here you have been talking for one hour I'll explain this thing later on the difference between since and for right. one more sentence I have been boiling potatoes for 20 minutes and she has been playing since morning again since and for I'll be explaining these things later on mm -hmm. You mean the time limit is of some major sort of in importance? It's very important in this sense. If you don't mention time, then the structure is wrong. Right. Because then it will be confused with present continuous tense. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll uh, construct two sentences. One is, uh, he, it is raining. Mm -hmm. And the other is, it has been raining. 
If I say it has been raining and stop it, that is wrong. It has, it has been, been raining since, since or morning. for. Mm -hmm. yes. and then we'll move to negative construction. Same formula has to be followed, but here we'll add uh, not mm -hmm. after, has or have, yeah. or before, been. The same word, same name, Seema. Seema has not been cooking since morning. You see, previous sentence was Seema has been cooking. So here, Seema has not been cooking since morning. You have not been talking for one hour. And I have not been boiling potatoes for 20 minutes. Right. And she has not been playing since morning. Can you make a sentence? Negative. Negative. He has not been working since last month. Good. Thank God I'm correct. Very good. Very good. Well, I would like uh, to suggest you all that note down the formula so that you can make the sentences of your own choice and it will help you. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Uh, talking about interrogative or question form, mm -hmm. what happens? Has or have comes to the beginning. Right. And subject goes. At the end. Not at. It is used before the verb and after has or have verb. That is between the helping verb and the main verb. Formula is a bit difficult. Can you <coughs> just give me one statement? That Sentence. Hmm. For example, uh, the same word. Has Seema not been cooking since morning? Mm -hmm. And in our examination system, one has to be very careful in using the question mark. If question mark is not used, the sen sentence is wrong. Okay. In spoken, we can simply uh, raise our tone, voice, there is rising intonation to show this is a question form. Mm -hmm. In writing, question form must be, that is question mark question must be put. Mark. One more sentence, have you not been talking for one hour? And have I not been boiling potatoes for 20 minutes? And has she not been playing since morning? Mm -hmm. If somebody uh, simply understands present perfect tense, he can do this easily by adding been and ing form. Right. But then since and for is important that I'll explain later on at the end of the tense. The sentence now, that I made, if I change it into interrogative form, I'll say, has he not been working since last month? Yes. Right. Good. So shall we move to function now? Sure. Where or how it is used. Okay. Function. We use the present perfect continuous tense to talk about an action which began at some point in the past and is still continuing. Uh, I'll give you the idea of timeline. Uh, you just like, uh, you, you make a line. Uh, with arrows on both the sides. So in the middle is present and towards backside is past and future that is dotted that is not clear. So this action in fact uh, this tense is used for an action that started somewhere in the past still going on and it may continue in future. For example if I say I've been standing here for last uh, five minutes it means action started five minutes ago is going on right now when I'm speaking and it may continue but we don't know till what time. One example, the people have been cleaning the roads since last Saturday. If you look at this sentence, have been cleaning the roads since last Saturday. If you're talking, if you're saying this thing right now, this action has been going on for last few days and it is going on right now and it may continue in future as well. Second thing, this tense is also sometimes used for an action already finished. In such cases, the emphasis on the continuity of the action in the past but the result is still being felt in present. For example, if I say, why are your clothes wet? You'll say, I've been walking in the rain. You see, action is over, but effects are still there. Or if I say, why are you so tired? You can say, for example, I've been running for a long time. Again, the process of running, the action is over now, but uh, the effects are there, that is your fatigue and exhaustion is still there. We cannot use the present perfect continuous tense with expressions that refer to a finished period of time. For example, you look tired. Here you would say, yes, I was cycling non-stop until five o'clock. Here was is being used with the cycling because action has already finished. So here if you use present continuous tense, that would be wrong. You can also use this tense to talk about repeated actions and events. For example, I have been playing a lot of tennis these days. You have been watching many interesting documentaries these days. We often use present perfect continuous tense to talk about more temporary actions and situations. For example, the child has been weeping for an hour. Temporary, definitely. One hour, two hours, three hours, these are, uh, uh, these are hours which may finish, let's say, after some time. So, it is temporary, not permanent. Uh, the man has been standing on the corner 
all day. Here again, the man has been turning all day. It is although all day, but again, that is temporary, not permanent. Now, I'll come to the use of since and for. So, should we discuss uh, the difference between since and for now? Exactly. I mean, I've never, this idea has never been clear in my mind where we use since and where you, we should use for. Why? You know, uh, because when you talk about our mother tongue or national language, that is Urdu language, mm -hmm. we use uh, say, subho se, or mm -hmm. se. I'll make two sentences in Urdu. Wo subha se kaam kar raha hai, or upishle paanch teno se. Kaam 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 the say changes into two things in English. Hmm. One is sense, hmm. the other is for. And here, many Pakistani students, they commit mistakes in examination, in classroom, in activities, while speaking even. For is basically used for duration. Mm -hmm. Duration means, uh, for example, if you say five days, six days, not or six months. Not a defined months, time limit. Not a defined time. Uh, look at the sentence. He, is, he, has been, uh, he has been doing this job for... 10 days or people have been gathering here for last few months few months but since is Shall I used add an example yes sure he has been settled in abroad for last 20 years mm. he, he has settled abroad bean is not here no he has settled Ab because that is sort of active thing right. not passive structure right. Right. and yes abroad uh, he has gone abroad we don't use any other preposition here before abroad. He okay. has gone abroad. Okay. We cannot say he has gone to abroad. Okay, okay. So you're right. For, what was your sentence? For few? For few years. For few years. You're right. But for example, if you say, uh, if I say, uh, talk about the same person, and if I give you the year 1980. That is a particular time limit, so we'll use since. So if I say he has been living in France. Since 1980. 1998. Good. Or if I say he has been uh, living in France dash 10 years. Since or for? for? Good. Now here confusion starts when we confuse this tense with present perfect and present continuous tense. There is a major sort of confusion and that is never seriously clear in my mind what is continuous tense and what is perfect continuous tense. Right. In continuous tense we, we say, uh, for example, he is uh, playing cricket match. Hmm. He's playing a cricket match. That is a simple stop. continuous tense. Yes. While I'm speaking, action is going on. One more sentence. You are talking with me. Continuous, action mm -hmm. is going on. We are standing. Action is going on. Mm. But the moment we change into present perfect continuous, has comes in, ing form remains here since so far. For example, we have been standing here for last 15 minutes. Repeatedly continuous. We have been standing here. Action started in the past, is going on, will continue in future as oh, well. Okay. And then uh, if I give you a sentence from present perfect tense, he has done his job. Now this is something entirely different. Here action started in the past, finished in the past. Right. So present perfect tense is used for something that uh, where action started in the past and has recently finished or finished in the past but effect is still there. Mm -hmm. For example, one interesting uh, sentence. I go to my classroom after the long break, I say, somebody has stolen my lunch. So mm -hmm. what is the effect? The effect is the action has been done recently. But effect is on me that I am hungry as well as angry. Right. But if I say, I have cut my finger, what is the effect? I'm still feeling the pain. pain. But here I can not say somebody has been stealing my Mm -hmm. lunch or I've been cutting my finger that is wrong has been uh, gives us the effect as an example hota raha hoga yes hota raha exactly good hota raha so something that started in the past is going on and will continue in future as well mm -hmm. and to understand this thing I think time concept is very important the idea which I gave you we talk about past present and future and in many languages there is no future tense for example in Arabic they say mazi and mazare that is like madare or madi what they say mm -hmm. uh, present and past but no future in english present uh, is there past is there and that is why when a verb changes from present into past its shape changes right for example go becomes went break becomes broke but in future the verb doesn't change rather we add something either in urdu we say gagi in english will shall right. you see i go in the past i went but future, I go, I will go, mm -hmm. I shall go. Mm -hmm. So here, like uh, we, we have to keep in mind few facts that number one, English is not like Urdu. Exactly. English has its own sounds. 
English has its own grammatical rules too. Mm -hmm. We, when we speak English, we must follow those rules. We cannot, for example, model English on Urdu language. Mm -hmm. And that is why we commit so many mistakes in grammar, in pronunciation. Uh, and like the effect is that either communication is broken. Sometimes pretty foolish mistakes. Yes, people commit mistakes like we're talking pronunciation, for example, look at the word uh, I-N-D-I-C-T. We discussed long ago I-N-D-I-C-T. Many people say indict and indictment where the word is indict. Mm -hmm. So if this person uses the same thing in a, in a structure mm -hmm. where grammar is wrong, and pronunciation is wrong too. So what is the impact? The altogether there is impact no, is... Yes, there is no uh, communication. So uh, since is used uh, for, uh, for an action where starting point is given. For example, I have been doing this job since Monday. So starting point is given. Monday. Mm. That is Monday. So it means when, or if I teach the same thing from different angle, I would say, when we talk about calendar, there are 12 months. Uh, when we talk about months in general, for example, five year, five five months, six months, we're talking about duration. We use for. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been doing this activity for two months, but the moment I give starting point, since that's December. a January or December, we'll use since. Similarly, in the clock, there are twelve hours. So when we talk about hours in general, mm -hmm. for for two hours. But when you mention the time, one o'clock, two o'clock, mm -hmm. so we use since. I think the idea is pretty much clear to every one of you. I'll repeat. For is used for duration and since is used for starting point. I'll make three sentences now. One present continuous, then present perfect, and then present perfect continuous. Just to differentiate between these three tenses. Number one. And the children are uh, eating their lunch. Present continuous tense. Good. The children have eaten their lunch. Mm. Have eaten. Perfect tense. Good. Children have been eating lunch for last 30 minutes. Perfect continuous tense. Good. I think for. this was an appropriate way and a very precise way to tell you the difference between these three tenses. Mm, good. Precise. Is it precise or precise? Precised. Precise, sir. Last, last sound? Sir. Precise. Precise. There are some words which are again mispronounced, like precise should be precise. Increase should be increase. Increase. Cease should be cease. cease. But if you say cease, people might not understand what you're saying. So uh, we should know the both the versions. And if we are sitting among people who know the right version, we should use the right one. Otherwise, very interesting example. Once uh, uh, a nephew of mine, he came to me. I was teaching him the story here and taught us. Mm -hmm. He said tortoise. I said the word is tortoise. Tortoise. He was very happy, excited as well. He went to the school. The next day he came, he was quite down, crestfallen. I said, what happened? Everybody laughed when he said he tortoise. He said, my teacher said it's tortoise. All right. Then what should I do? I said, okay, keep both the things here. Hmm. One for your school, wrong one, tortoise. <laughs> and the other tortoise for Those the who know educated what gathering. Like. Yeah. So uh, how was it? Do you think you've learned something? It was perfect. And I learned a lot from you. Seriously, I learned a lot. And I hope all of you learn a lot from Mr. Ashit. We should be really thankful to him. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I that was all from my side. Okay. This is all for today. And I promise we'll bring some other interesting topic for you and you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.